Hi everybody, uh, this is the online PowerPoint presentation for the fifth year medical student medical genetics clinical round. And usually uh, during this round, we discuss the clinical as well as the laboratory diagnosis of Down syndrome or what's known as trisomy. 21 and we're gonna go through how to clinically diagnose the case and how to navigate within the clinical sheet in terms of physical examination to the patient and in terms of taking the history from the family and how to appropriately reach the diagnosis of down syndrome so for Diagnosing Down syndrome clinically, we need to fulfill three triads clinically. The first thing that we need to fulfill would be mental retardation or what's known as intellectual disability currently. This is equivalent to developmental delay in young kids who are too young to go through the normal IQ test. And this is usually done through the developmental history part of the sheet. And the second item we need to look for in order to diagnose a case with Down syndrome is to prove that the case has hypotonia. And this is done um, during the neurological examination part when you're doing systematic examination of the case. The last thing that we need to look for is characteristic dysmorphic features or what's known as mongoloid facies. So in order to say that this is a Down syndrome case, we have to fulfill the three criteria, not only two, not only one. And just as a note, you have to understand that the dysmorphic features is just one of the criteria. And the dysmorphic features contains a bunch of peculiar features. You may find all of them uh, in the case that you'll see in the exam. You might not find all of them. Um, if you did not find all of the dysmorphic features in the case, do not worry as long as the case has some sort of developmental delay as well as hypotonia and some of the abnormal features rest assured that you have diagnosed the case clinically as a probable Down syndrome. So the big question is, now we know that you need to fulfill three clinical criteria in order to diagnose a case with a Down syndrome. So where should you ask the questions and which parts of the sheet are quite important in order to look for these three features? It's going to be the developmental history where you're going to look for developmental delay, the neurological examination where you're going to look for the hypotonia, as well as the general examination where you're going to look or the abnormal features. So usually we start the sheet by history taking. The personal history is quite the usual history that you take. When it comes to the complaint, because the case is usually a case that's admitted to the hospital, so usually the complaint that you're going to find is a complaint of the complication of the Down syndrome. Most commonly, it's going to be due to an infection like pneumonia or gastroenteritis. Some other complaints are going to be related to heart failure because, as you know, Down syndrome are known to have congenital heart disease. So sometimes they go into heart failure that causes some sort of respiratory distress that leads to admission. So this is going to be the main complaint that the mom is going to talk about. And when it comes to present uh, illness history, you're going to do a usual analysis for whatever complaint you are going to hear from mom. And then when it comes to the past history, we're going to ask about previous hospital admissions because 
the down population is liable to recurrent infections and they might have a congenital heart defect. So you might find a history of frequent admission because because of an infection or because of a heart failure. Sometimes they are on chronic medication like levothyroxine for hypothyroidism or heart failure medication. You can also ask about history of previous surgeries. You might find a surgery for a congenital heart disease or a GI anomaly like for example anal atresia. So one of the important items in the history taking is the obstetric history. Uh, one of the important things is to ask about the maternal age, because as you know, all maternal age that's above 35 is an important risk factor for Down syndrome, specifically the meiotic non-disjunction type. So whether you take the maternal age in the obstetric history or whether you take it in the family history, it doesn't matter, but you need to take the maternal age. And the maternal age that we focus on is not mom's current age. What we focus on is mom's age during pregnancy. That's what's more important because you might face a mom that has an old maternal age while you're taking the history, but at the time of pregnancy as well as delivery, her age is quite within the reasonable age that we do not consider as an old maternal age, um, which is above 35, like I've said. Also, one of the things that we ask about is history of incubation and history of jaundice, specifically prolonged jaundice because Down syndrome are liable to have prolonged pathological jaundice for numerous reasons. Um, some of it would be hypothyroidism, if they have a GI congenital anomaly, or if they have problems with feeding, it might affect the interior hepatic circulation. Okay, so um, I told you that three items are important in terms of diagnosing a case with Down syndrome, which is the dysmorphic features, hypotonia, and developmental delay. But let's say you've seen a baby early on and the baby is in the neonatal age. It's quite difficult to say that the baby has some sort of developmental delay when they are quite young, but you're going to be able to um, pick up the dysmorphic features. But there are some other features that present early on in cases with Down syndrome, which is low birth weight, prematurity, and prolonged jaundice, like I've said before. The developmental history is a very important part in the sheet. I can't emphasize this enough. And usually they will manifest uh, some sort of delay that's between profound DQ of 20 up to 70. And it's a very important item in the sheet because like I told you, it's one of the items that's needed for diagnosis. So if you did not prove that the case has some sort of developmental delay, so you're missing one item. So you have to take it in detail, you have to ask about the gross motor, so you ask the mom, when did the baby start to support his head or her head? When did the baby start to sit? Or um, when did the baby start to walk? If the baby's able to walk, you ask about the fine motor, the polymer grasp, the pincer grasp. And then you ask about social, the ability to imitate, the ability to recognize the mom, to know strangers from familiar people. And you can ask about the language. When did the baby start to do the M sound? Uh, is the baby able to say mom or dad? It kind of depends on the age. So the question the questions that you're going to ask mom is going to be tailored um, according to the age of the patient that you're going to see. So this is the first um, item in the triad that's needed for the diagnosis. Um, in terms of the dietetic history and the vaccination history, it's normal like any other sheet. And in terms of family history, like I told you, you can ask about the maternal age. This is the most important part. Okay, 
Then we jump to uh, the examination part. Um, and I told you that in the general examination, when you look at the child, we're going to try to look at the dysmorphic features that will help us say, oh, this case is probably Down syndrome. And when you start doing the systemic examination, you're going to do the general examination. But what's more important is that you look for the hypotonia when you're doing uh, the neurological examination, because this is one of the items that's needed for diagnosis. But just before I go to the general examination, a point that I need to stress that when you're doing the systemic examination, you need to focus on the pulmonary examination as well as the cardiovascular examination, because I told you that this case is probably going to be having some sort of complication, which is might be an infection. And usually the infection is in the form of pneumonia, bronchiolitis, or maybe asthma. So you need to do a good pulmon pulmonology evaluation. You need to listen to the heart just to pick up if there is a congenital heart disease. Because at the end, when you say the diagnosis, you're responsible for diagnosing a case with Down syndrome, as well as picking up the complication that the child has. Okay, so when we're doing a general examination, we start by examining the patient from head to toe. Um, and we're going to start by the head and neck examination. And the first thing that we're going to look at is the head circumference. Cases with Down syndrome usually have macrocephaly, which means that the circumference of the, of the skull is two standard deviation is my, I'm sorry, is minus two standard deviation. Um, another thing that we look at when we look at the skull, we notice that uh, there is what's known as brachycephaly. So if you look at the picture with this um, guy that has Down syndrome, the profile picture, if you look at the occiput, you would notice that it's quite flat. And usually the occiput is convex and not flat. So a flat occiput is known as brachycephaly. So brachy means shortened or flat and cephaly refers to the skull or the head. One of the things that you might notice is that the fontanelles are still open, so there is a delayed closure in the fontanelle, but it, this is a little bit non-specific. One of the other things that we notice is that their hair is quite smooth and silky, and they have what we call a rounded face. So when you look at the face of the Down syndrome, it has a very, very characteristic feature, what we call upward slanting of the palpebral fissure. So if you look at the eyes and if you look at the inner cancers and the outer cancers, normally the inner cancers and the outer cancers, if you take an imaginary line that connects them both, they have to be at the same level. But in cases with Down syndrome, if you take this imaginary line, you'll see that the outer cancer lies at a level that's above the inner cancer. And this is what we call upward slanting. So upward means up, so the direction is up. And slanting refers to the shape of the eye, meaning that the eye is kind of pulled upward. Another thing that you might notice if you kind of look closely at the eyes, and it's more obvious with a slit lamp examination, and it can be seen by naked eyes, but if you look at the eyes that has a light colored iris, so this is what we call a brush filled spot. So if you look at the picture that shows a close up to this blue iris, you can see a ring of hypopigmented areas. So this is what we call brush filled spots. Another thing that we can notice is at 
an epicanthal fold, which is a fold of a skin in the inner canthus, and it can be unilateral and it can be bilateral. Another thing that we might notice is that the ears are quite low seted. So if you take an imaginary line from the inner canthus and try to connect it to the ear, Normally, one third of the ear has to be above this imaginary line. If the ear lies below this imaginary line, this is what we call a low seated ear. Another thing that we can notice is what's what's called the depressed nasal bridge. So if you look at this picture, you'll see that the nasal bridge, which is the bone that makes your um, that forms the shape of your nose, is quite depressed and flat, uh, and it's a little bit broad. Another thing that we notice if we look at a baby with Down syndrome is what's called protrusion of the tongue. So usually when you look at a baby with Down syndrome, the baby usually protrudes his lung either permanently or intermittently, and this is because the maxillofacial bones are quite hypoplastic, so, so the oral cavity is quite small, so the baby tends to protrude his tongue in order to be able to swallow as well as breathe. Another thing that we might notice is what we call a scrotal tongue. If you look at the tongue in this picture, you can see that there are multiple pharaohs in the tongue. When you examine the neck of a person that has Down syndrome, especially those uh, with young age, those are uh, in infancy, like the first year of life, you'll notice that the neck is quite short and the skin is quite redundant. And this is what we call excessive nuchal skin. So if you look at this picture, you can see that the neck, which is uh, which is covering the back of this baby, you'll see that it's making multiple folds. And now we're going to examine the palms of the baby. One of the things that we look at is what we call a single transverse palmar crease. So if you look at the picture, you'll see that um, one of the creases transversely cut the hand from medial to lateral. And usually when you look at normal creases in the hand, the creases doesn't transversely cut the whole breadth of the hand. It usually stops um, either a little bit to the lateral side or a little bit to the medial side, but it never cuts the hand from the medial end to the lateral end. And this transverse palmar crease can be unilateral or can be bilateral, so you need to look at uh, both hands. And sometimes it doesn't exist, so sometimes you can look at baby with Down syndrome and look at the palms and you might not see a single transverse palmar crease and you can find the other dysmorphic features. Um, another thing that we look at is the length of the fingers. So usually the length of the fingers is quite short. Um, so this is what we call brachydactyly. Dactyly means fingers and brachy means short. Another thing that we can notice when we are looking at the hands is a curved little finger. So if you can look at the um, picture that shows you the dorsum of the palm, you can see that the little finger is quite curved. So one of the important items in the history taking is the obstetric history. Uh, one of the important things is to ask about the maternal age, because as you know, all maternal age that's above 35 is an important and usually uh, during this round, we discuss the clinical as well as the laboratory diagnosis of Down syndrome, or what's known as trisomy 21. And we're going to go through how to 
clinically diagnose the case and how to navigate within the clinical sheet in terms of physical examination to the patient and in terms of taking the history from the family and how to appropriately reach the diagnosis of Down syndrome. So for diagnosing Down syndrome clinically, we need to fulfill three triads clinically. The first thing that we need to fulfill would be mental retardation or what's known as intellectual disability currently. This is equivalent to developmental delay in young kids who are too young to go through the normal IQ test. And this is usually done through the developmental history part of the sheet. And the second item we need to look for in order to diagnose a case with Down syndrome is to prove that the case has hypotonia. And this is done um, during the neurological examination part when you're doing systematic examination of the case. The last thing that we need to look for is characteristic dysmorphic features or what's known as mongoloid facies. So in order to say that this is a Down syndrome case, we have to fulfill the three criteria, not only two, not only one. And just as a note, you have to understand that the dysmorphic features is just one of the criteria. And the dysmorphic features contains a bunch of peculiar features. You may find all of them. OK. So um, for diagnosis, um, we need to fulfill the clinical criteria and then we need to do some investigations to confirm. So the investigation that we do is divided into two parts. The first part is diagnostic investigations and the rest is complementary investigations where we look for complications. So we diagnose Down syndrome with an investigation that's known by karyotyping, which is basically looking at the number and the shape of chromosomes. So this is a picture of what we call a karyotyping. You can see that it shows the number of chromosomes and you can see that this patient has two chromosomes of each, so you have two chromosomes of one, two chromosomes of two, until you um, come to chromosome 21, and you can see that this patient has three copies of the 21 chromosome. And this is usually the meiotic non-disjunction type, especially when all the cells has the trisomy 21. The translocation type can be diagnosed by the karyotype as well. So the, tran the translocation type happens if either mom or dad is a carrier of a balanced translocation between chromosome 21 and any other chromosome, like for example, chromosome 14. So if the baby inherited this translocation as well as two extra 21 chromosomes from mom or dad. This baby is going to have three copies of 21. One is attached to the translocation. In this example, it's 21 to 14, and the other two is separated. And this is what we call a translocation type. The mosaic type or the mitotic non-disjunction type um, is another type of Down syndrome. And in this type, the problem happens during mitotic division in neutral, where some cells would have three copies of 21 and the other cells would have only two copies. And the extent of the clinical manifestation depends on the ratio of the cells that has trisomy 21 to the ratio of the cells that has only two copies of 21. So basically, this is a um, summary of how to clinically diagnose a case with Down syndrome. So before I 
end the presentation, I'm going to wrap up the important points. The first important point that clinically you need to diagnose a case with Down syndrome and you need to fulfill three criteria, developmental delay, developmental history, hypotonia, and neurological examination, as well as dysmorphic features. You need not find all the dysmorphic features, but you need to fulfill the three criteria. You need to ask about the maternal age because this is an important risk factor for myotic non-disjunction type. After diagnosing a case with Down syndrome, you need to look for the complication and the reason of why this case is admitted in the hospital, and commonly it's due to either an infection or due to heart failure due to congenital heart disease. So you need to do a thorough cardiovascular examination as well as a thorough chest examination. And this is basically the important points that you need to look for and you need to ask about when you're taking a sheet for a case with down syndrome thank you